A while back we went over the new quad remesh tool in Houdini 20, but I wanna cover it again because there's some things that you can do to get some better results that I want to show. So let's go ahead and set this up. So drop down a geometry node. I'll make this project file available on Patreon, by the way, if you wanna grab it on there, you can do so. But let's go ahead and just, there's actually a couple of different ways that you can do this. So I, I showed one of them off in a live stream, um, but I'm gonna cover a different one here in this video. And in the project file, I'll cover the um, attribute like transfer one. So just to show that this kind of works in the way that it works, let's drop down a grid here and let's make the rows and columns set to 100 each. And then all we need is a simple comb node. And this allows us to kind of comb the normals. So if we look at our normals, we have them all just kind of pointing up. So if I go ahead and press enter in our viewport, we have a little brush setting there so I can come into the radius and just up that. So I'm just going to paint in a little bit of a circle here just to kind of show what this does. So press escape to exit out of that. And then we need to promote these to the primitive normals because they're the primitive attribute type because these are on the points. So we'll do an attribute remote and we'll go from point to primitive because on, if I drop down the quad mesh, if we look at the guides, which is what we're gonna be using here, if we hover over that it says the name of the vector three primitive attribute. So it tells us that we need that primitive attribute. So we'll set this, we'll leave this as average, and then let's go ahead and set the original name to the normal. And then the new name, we'll just set that to guide. And we'll wire this in here. And let's go ahead and disable our normals now. So just by default, it gives you just a, a remesh here, which doesn't do a whole lot um, of difference. You can mess around with the different settings here, but let's go ahead and set up this guide attribute. So we'll set the name here. And then that enables the guide weight. So if we set this to one, we're going to see that our geometry changes. So you see, we kind of have this little swirling on our geometry, which is kind of what we're looking for as far as able to control our settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select all these and alt click and drag over. And then I'm going to drop down a pig head and we'll use this just as a little demonstration here. So let's disable the shader and then we need some more resolution here. So let's drop down a subdivide and we can crank this up. Let's see, let's go to a value of two should be fine. And then we'll come to our comb node and it's gonna give us some weird stuff. Go ahead and just reset all of our changes there. Now, if we press enter, we have our brush back. Let's go ahead and just lower that back down. And I'm gonna to come to the eye here and I'm just gonna kind of paint around the eye because we'd like to just control the resolution around the eye. So I'll make a couple rings here. We'll see how this turns out. So I'll make a couple rings around this eye as well. And then we also want to just have the uh, kind of polygons flow along the middle here. So let's up this. So we'll just kind of brush down the middle and on the ears here, maybe we want to kind of go along the ear like that. We'll do the same on this ear. And then we want the mouth to kind of flow around. So we'll do that. We'll do the same on this side. And then our neck, we'd like to kind of stay the same here. So we'll just kind of brush along here. And this just kind of guides the, the algorithm along, shows you kind of where you want your polygons to flow. And this is kind of the easiest way to do it with a just a simple comb node. And we can brush this along the back as well. Just something real rough, and I'll just continue that down. We'll put a couple things along here, and then we'll brush along the back of the ears over here as well. And let's just see what this does to our jammer sheet. So if I go ahead and accept that, We'll spin around and then everything's all set up. So let's go ahead and activate the quad mesh and take a look, see what this does. So we will need to up the resolution here. So let's set this to 100,000. And you can see if I go ahead and come back into our guides here, let's turn off the guide weight to start off with. So without any guide weight, this is the mesh that we get. So you see, we just have 
and flowing along the eyeballs, kind of over the eyeballs. We don't really have anything special going on there. Kind of flows not along with the ears and the mouth doesn't do too bad of a job. It kind of flows along there. But if we set this guide weight up to one and see how this affects our mesh. So you see we have this polygons kind of flowing a little bit better along the kind of mouth and chin area around here. We don't have very much going on with the eyeballs. So that is kind of one thing that doesn't work too well is the, it doesn't create rings very well. So that's just one thing that I wanted to show as far as uh, it's kind of the limitations of it. So not perfect for remeshing, but you can maybe get most of the way with this and then maybe remesh around the eyeballs and get a good job. It does a pretty decent job following along the ears there. You can see this ear is done pretty well as well. And then again, the back, it's kind of flowing along pretty well along here. So you can kind of control things a little bit better along that. I do have another example that I'll include in this project file. Let's just jump over to it. So with this, we're just um, remeshing using an attribute transfer. And in this case, I was drawing a curve along the eyeball here. I kind of did a couple different things on the eyes just to see what it does. So you can see how that affects different eyes. This does a little bit better job with getting the rings along the eyeballs, but it's still not perfect. So that's something that I would like to see uh, done a little bit better inside uh, the next release of this tool. Uh, hopefully we can get um, some better control over some rings and stuff. But that is the general idea, how to get a little bit better topology along your meshes using guides. This is the simplest way to do it. It's just use a comb, at least the simplest way that I've found, and uh, an attribute promote to get those onto the primitive normals. But it does a very, very good job uh, as far as uh, most cases with this quadri mesh. So very impressed with how fast it is and how good of a job it is or it does so you can play around with it and see what different results you can get obviously you can come in here into the symmetry and stuff and we could you know we could mirror it to kind of get rid of some of those little topology issues that you see kind of in this little cheekbone area see if we get some different stuff going on there you can mirror it and kind of get rid of some of those create some other issues but overall it does a pretty good job like i said just play around with it and Use uh, the little comb method to kind of tweak your geometry and get some, some better results out of your meshes if you need it. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel show how to do a bunch of different stuff inside Houdini. So if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. Like I said, I also have a Patreon where I'll make this project file available. So if you want to grab it on there, you can do so on there. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.